the long range meta right now, very balanced, but it's also boring because every gun is the same. There's no Kilo versus Amax right now. Again, unless we talk about LMGs, but LMGs are so different that I don't think they should be in this discussion. In other words, I think there should be an AR with a lot of recoil that has a lot faster of a theoretical TTK. And there isn't one right now at all. The differences are like within a hundred milliseconds. For ad-free episodes, as well as early access and bonus episodes, check out our Patreon. Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that, for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you <laughs> kick it off, Tanner? We've got to... This is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are live, boys and girls. Welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty podcast, episode number 347. My name is Case, also known as Razanon. Today, I'm joined by Tanner once again and Kierkegaard for the first time in a while. My dog, some of you may remember him. But my mom's out of town, so he's chilling in my room now uh, till she's back, and then I'll never see him again till she leaves again. Uh, and welcome to the show. You guys won't see him. And even if he was in frame, you wouldn't see him. My sheets are black right now, and so is he. I have, I have sat or laid on him numerous times. Mm. Numerous times. He is, the, he is actually black. Is he? And, and it, at night, it's very frustrating. But that's not why you guys are here, so welcome to the show. Uh, today, we will not be talking about my dog anymore. Uh, we, will, we will be talking about a dog, a virtual dog. We won't, by the way. The stupid operator skin, was that. that's what that was a reference to. We'll edit all of this out. Welcome to the show, episode 347. Today, we are doing first impressions of season five of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, and Warzone 2.0. Mm. Really glad they did 2.0, by the way. Did they need to do that? I wonder what the decision-making process was there. It kind of pisses me off. What would you ra rather have had it been? Warzone 2. Like, yeah. Did we need a 2.0? Like, this is a software update? Like, what are we doing? Because uh, it's not I feel a like when they, update. like, use the word for marketing, it almost does sound better. Like, Warzone 2.0 over, like, Warzone 2. It has, like, an extra oomph to it, you know? An I get it. Point. It's stupid, but I feel like it's something to do with that. Like, it, it I sounds... Agree. I don't know. Sounds more interesting, There's maybe. a reason they did it. Yeah, and it's probably yeah. a good one. They know how to make money. That's yeah, all some they guy know how to do. Yeah, $20 but... million dollars a year came up with that idea to put the point oh on the end of it. And then yeah. you got a billion dollar raise, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 0 0.75.2 .2 would be more accurate. Yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, today we're doing first impressions. So, uh, we have a lot to talk about and get into here. And since our Thursday episode, or last episode, we've played quite a bit more. Uh, and we have quite a bit more to say on, on uh, the season in general. Now, I'll start by saying... You know, as we're going to get into, there wasn't a ton that really changed with season five. So a lot of the a lot of these first impressions are going to be kind of um, smaller, frankly, because, again, not that much change. But we'll get into more specifics on that uh, before we get into it. Wondering if we have any announcements. I don't believe we do. Uh, we should have our Patreon episode start cooking next week. And yeah, this will be a banger month for all that because we got a. Uh, we haven't even gotten the new resurgence map. We have the MW3 yeah. reveal this month, so we'll probably do maybe one or next week or something. But also, we there's a lot of other things coming this month that will maybe save some of the some of the episodes for that topic or something. Yeah, and I should also add there because there are things that are coming in season. And lately, that's meant like a week after the launch of the season, not season reloaded necessarily. 
We might do another, like, we might do, like, a season five second impressions next Saturday if a bunch of this shit that they said is coming mid-season gets added after all. Mainly I'm thinking of uh, Fortress, the map. But, yeah. you know, it's possible that comes out, like, Tuesday. And then maybe we'll do a Saturday episode on that. We don't really know yet, but we will, you know, we'll keep you guys posted. I New think Cogs we'll even get uh, season five reloaded this month, too. Yeah. Because it'll yeah, be so 30 days. So, yeah, there will be a lot. It's going to be a good month. It's going to be a good month for content. But, uh, yeah, with that said, other than that, uh, do we have any other announcements? I don't think we really do. No. Okay. Yeah, so let's get into this. Uh, season five first impression. So, we've broken this into a couple of categories as usual. Multiplayer, uh, well, we're, yeah, multiplayer, the new guns, specifically Warzone in general, and then kind of miscellaneous first impressions of the season. Uh, as always, first caveat here, many of these opinions are subject to change. I'm sure some of them, in fact, will. They they often do. Uh, we The season's only been out for a few days, so if we have some feeling or impression or uh, review of some mechanic or thing uh, after two days, that might change in a week or two. And when that does happen, which it which it happens most of the time, uh, we'll we'll bring that up in in subsequent episodes. But yeah. these are as the as the title implies first impressions so yes. keep that in mind yeah yeah um, and then tanner has another oh, little yeah. yeah, kind of yeah. preamble here yeah like kind of already said um let's be clear this is this is not a new season uh they did get on the internet and lie to us they claim this is season five but it's really not in my opinion we're in like season four and three quarters at this point uh basically what we've gotten in season five is a war zone ranked reset a rank reset, and that's about it. With a minor movement upgrade and a gun balance or two, yeah. Uh, the game is in like a good state, so I'm not really complaining about that. But it's kind of weird how this has been happening. Like we get a new season, and then half of the shit comes in season or season like reloaded. So it's it like they talk about the all this stuff. Season. It does. Yeah. So if like if the game was in a worse state, I would be really annoyed by all this. Um, because, like, again, they still haven't fixed any of the bugs since the game launched. I'm just, we're not even going to talk about them today because it doesn't matter. Any bug we've ever talked about, we'll tell you when they eventually fix it. They haven't fixed any of the main ones that have been in the game. Uh, the servers are still fucking ass. Stuttering happens every single game in Wars and uh, Ranked, especially. Um, yeah, but so it's like, all I will consider this a new season when we get the new Resurgence map, basically. Because it just doesn't feel like it at all. Kind of weird. Um, but you know, it's in a good enough state that I don't really mind. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And this is exactly what we said, uh, last season. It's like, yeah, not really anything has changed, but the game is still fun. So I don't really care. That's kind of where we're at now. Whenever, no, if, if season four was Vondel, that was a big one. The, the game changed a lot. I th did, did Vondel come out with the launch or did it come out like a week later? I don't remember. I don't remember anymore either. But they've know. been doing that from time to time. Yeah. It's like nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, anyway. Yeah. Um. Oh, what else is I? So Hold we're on, in season four and three quarters. But yeah, um, we're gonna start with multiplayer. Um, nothing has changed, or I haven't played it. Uh, I don't <laughs> care to because multiplayer doesn't change. So, strike. I think is a great map. Haven't played it in this game. Maybe never will, to be honest, because I'm not launching multiplayer Modern Warfare 2 in August of 2023. Um, and yeah, the other new map looked cool from the screenshots, but I've seen no gameplay of it, so I have nothing to say on multiplayer. Yeah, multiplayer just doesn't change anymore, which is, I guess, fine. I mean, I played quite a bit of multiplayer. I Let me relax. I played... An hour to 90 minutes of multiplayer post season five uh, because I wanted to unlock the new guns. So I popped the double battle pass XP token because I'm dumb and then started grinding some multiplayer just to kind of start chipping away at it. I talked about this already on Thursday. I have more to say on that, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so I played the new map for a while and it's. Yeah, it's really fun, like I said uh, on Thursday. I think it's a really cool, interesting map. It's 
I, I wouldn't even describe it as a three lane map, which is kind of insane because I would never trust Infinity Ward to make a map that's not three lanes ever again. I'll never trust them to do it again. In this case, this very anomalous case, Punta Mar is a not three lane map designed by Infinity Ward that's actually pretty fun. Uh, it's weird. It's like there's a street and there's like a car in the street and it's a very narrow street. And then there is like one building you can get into on one side and then a couple buildings on the other side of the street. And then there's some some elevation changes, but not too many. And there aren't buildings you can really get into except for like two of them. So, well, you can get in the buildings, but they're not there aren't like too many little tiny rooms or whatever. And it's pretty small, too. Actually, it's not a big map. It's fun. I like it. it. It plays interestingly. I haven't played like every game mode on it or anything, but it's uh, the the few game modes I did play on it were were pretty fucking fun and and interesting. Yeah. Um. But I again, this could be the most. This could be the best sixes map of all time, and it wouldn't matter. Cause like I'm not gonna play it ever again. Like I'll never. I'll probably never play Poon tomorrow again in my life. I'll probably die before I play Poon tomorrow again. Because there's no reason for me to. You know? The only thing that I think would be worth discussing from a multiplayer listener's perspective is if this is going to be a ranked multiplayer map, then that would warrant a lot more kind of thought with respect to this map. I don't know how this would play in ranked, and I don't know if they've been adding new maps to ranked. I was wondering um, that. I feel like they probably haven't been since the CDL season is over. I would imagine they just stick with whatever maps they were playing, and that's it. Which would be really unfortunate and boring. But, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Yeah. Yeah. So... So yeah, anyway, I don't know. It's a great map, but who cares? Uh, that's the the thing. They they don't make... Yeah, multiplayer is just not exciting or good. Uh, they added Havoc, the game mode. I, You know, it sounds fun on paper. I was saying this in the pre-show, but I'm in my 30s, and then when I was like ready to queue to start grinding my Battle Pass shit, I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, it does kind of sound fun. It's just too goofy for me, though. I can't do it. Uh, and then I just queued for Punta Mar instead. I, I don't know. I, I just don't care. Yeah, multiplayer is just dead. Did you play Sixth Strike? Cod is just dead forever. So, say again? Yeah. Um, did you play Strike? No. Okay. Yeah, uh, like like what I said when Infinity on, on Thursday, when Infinity Ward had said a few months back where they were like, we think multiplayer is in a good spot. Also, I mean, they're kind of right. They do, I think, realize they don't need to. They shouldn't waste their time. They could make a bunch of changes to multiplayer, like little changes. That's just it's not going to bring people back. Even if multiplayer COD felt like really fast paced, fun, solid TTK skill gap, uh, I'm not playing that over Warzone ever. Still, so it like they're not bringing players back. The people that are still playing multiplayer right now, like multiplayer ranked, they're going to play it no matter what. No matter how yeah. shit it is, because they're just a multiplayer right. main. They're a, they're a CDL wannabe. They want to grind ranked. Um, so those people are on it regardless. That's not. They can make so many changes, and I'm not coming back to it anyway. So I guess it. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. They know not to waste their own time. I think. And to be fair, multiplayer is fine. I don't think it's like like repulsive like some COD games multiplayer has been. Yeah, people get super dramatic years. with multiplayer COD and like it, you know, they said the same shit about MW19 and then Vanguard that it's the worst COD multiplayer of all time. It's not. It's Yeah. It's not. It's, like it's a fun. COD multiplayer. The problem with multiplayer isn't that it's broken or that there's like anything super overpowered or anything cuz there really isn't. The problem with it is it's fucking boring. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing worth playing it for 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 us anyway but i that's not even idub's fault i don't think there's anything they could do to make me like main multiplayer again i literally don't think there's anything they could do even a perfect ground war i still wouldn't choose that over a war zone i would maybe play multiplayer every once in a while at that point um 
but it's not gonna yeah it's not gonna like take over for me like i'm i'm saying even right now if they decided to revert or go back to all the changes people have been asking for like they added red dots on mini map when people shoot and better movement and shit that people wanted that some of it we had in the beta uh, people wanted it on launch. That was some of the feedback they received that they ignored and told people they were ignoring it and didn't care what they had to say right after they made a tweet saying we're listening to all feedback and then they said we don't actually care about your feedback. Go fuck yourself, you stupid bitch. They could do all that. I'm not going back to multiplayer because red dots are on the mini map, you know? So yeah, it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, if they did have ground war maps that were good, that would make me play multiplayer more, but... Not much more, y you know. Yeah, it's I just a combo of like the maps aren't good. They're big. The game has slower movement than MDM nineteen, so it's like you can't cross that open Lobbies map as don't quickly. Stay together. It just it's boring. Ground no shit talking yeah. anymore. Yeah, TTK yeah. is too fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just so many things. So anyway, season five didn't solve that problem, but it never was going to, nor did we expect it to. So anyway, moving on to the new guns. So, yeah, I had, I had said on Thursday, don't expect us to have an opinion on the new guns anytime soon. Luckily for me, we have a small but vibrant and extremely humble community in the Discord. Join the fucking Discord, by the way. And one of our uh, Discord members, longtime friend of the pod and listener, Drex, Drexler, uh, war criminal, uh, said something and he was like, hey, Raz, don't forget, you can unlock new guns in DMZ. All you have to do to unlock a new gun, even if you aren't there in the battle pass yet, is simply pick up the gun in DMZ and extract with it. And then you have it unlocked. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. So I was at like tier, like I said, 15 or whatever of the battle pass. I need 25 for one of the two. And then another 10 tiers for another one of the two to unlock it. Um... So I could spend a bunch of money to buy black cell or tier skips, neither of which I'm, I'm willing to do. So I was like, you know what? Let me try DMZ. Let me see what we can do here. So I messaged the boys in the fire group chat, stay mad. And I said, hey, anyone want to try DMZ real quick? Let's just see if we can get some of these new guns. So then Lag Show and Cope Cowboy were like, sure, fuck it. Let's try. And my plan was, I'm going to do one DMZ raid, and if I don't get one of the new guns, I'm done trying. Because that's going to, that, at that point, it's too much of an investment of my time. So, spoiler alert, and we've already said this before, DMZ player based so bad. The worst players on Earth. So we load into Vondel DMZ as a three-man. I think the max size is four, by the way. Doesn't matter, trust me. The max size is four for a squad. And then you can assimilate up to, I think, six. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we load in, and I'm like, all right, literally all we're doing is opening our fucking maps. We're finding the Hunt Squad contract, which is a skull icon, the closest one. We're running straight to it, picking it up, and then completing the contract by killing that squad. And then we're going to run those people's pockets for one of the new guns. So what do we do? We load into Vondel, open our maps, find the Hunt Squad contract, run straight line directly to it, pick it up, run straight line directly to where the squad is. They were behind Stadium. Oops, that's a mistake, right? Because I know Stadium, the, whole, the boys, in fact, know Stadium. That's our spot. Like, we fucking are the owners of the franchise. That's the home team that plays at that stadium. Call us Mark Cuban, I guess, because we just mm -hmm. own that stadium. This was a mistake. So they're cowering in the stadium. In fact, they weren't cowering, actually. That was a lie. I'm the first one up there. Oh, oh by the way, there's no armor vest. You don't have, like, three plates by default. So I have one plate. You can if you buy DMZ operator bundles. Should have bought one before we you could, in. yeah. But like, I had like forgotten about this, yeah. so I, like, I have one plate and I um, I enter the building where the circle is for the squad, and someone is standing still, just standing, man. Very cool, like the emoji. So I start shooting at this person, this character on the screen, 
And then I get a downed icon and I'm genuinely shocked because it was in fact a real ass person who just didn't react in time. And it's not like I was used like hitting headshots only or something. I had some contraband dog shit ground loot AK and I just like shot him and he barely moved down. And then his teammate comes through with a KV broadside dragon's breath shotgun. I almost down him, but I don't. He downs me because I have one plate. Doesn't finish me. Can't. And then by this time, Lag and Cope have caught up. And they just run through and murder the other three kids who are doing God knows what. I don't know what weapons they were using. But no one was in any danger ever, and we killed all four of them. And they had the full three-plate armor vest. None of us had any of those, by the way. So let me just... The point of this story is that these players are terrible. And this is how you should unlock new guns. Because sure enough, we run their pockets. Guess what one of these fucking idiots has? The Black Cell of Answer. Yep. So we pick that bitch up. Lag's like, all right, I got it, Raz, here. I pick it up. There's an extraction helicopter in the middle of stadium. We run to the middle of stadium, call it in, we're gone. No problem. To that raid was maybe 12 minutes long, maybe. And we had to run like across the map for that squad because we did not spawn close to stadium. So then uh, Lag's like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll unlock the gun. Cut, bring it in and drop it for me. So now I have the gun unlocked. So even if I lose it in DMZ, it doesn't matter. I can make my own for multiplayer and shit. So we load into the next uh, raid, go back to Vondel, and we just run it back in exactly the same way, exactly everything the same happens. Kind of. We get the contract. This time it's not at Stadium, it's at Castle. Ooh. So we run straight to Castle, and they're just running away from us. And they run into like an open field to get away from us. Now keep in mind, they could have gone into the castle and had a super defensible camping position. They ran past the structure into the field that's like outside of the crumbling wall where there's no cover. So we come, we roll through. Now we do have armor vests from those shit kids we killed in the last raid. And we just start barking and kill all of them. And they're talking shit. They're telling Lag they have his IP address and he's going to get no hacked. No way. Yeah, it was deeply amusing. Uh, by the way, Lag didn't get hacked. Spoiler alert. They're just fucking dumb idiot kids. Kill all of them, and then sure enough, one of them has an advancer, and one of them has the new fucking sniper, the Carrick or whatever. So I'm like, fantastic. So I take the Carrick. Um, Lag takes the advancer from our last raid so that he can unlock it, because you can just drop it for your friends. And then Cope takes another advancer from this other squad of four miserable dog shit trash kids we just killed. And then we run over to wherever the helicopter is. We extract. No problems. Done. We all unlock the advancer. And I even unlock the new sniper in what must have been 25 minutes max. Or we could have bought Black Cell for 35 tier skips or played for actually six hours to unlock 35 tier skips. Actually. Probably longer, actually. Um, so just uh, the whole moral of this story is dmz kids are terrible and next time you're tempted to buy black cell or buy tier skips because you want to play with the new guns right away don't do that let the dumb fuck dmz kids do it load into dmz you don't even need weapons honestly you can just ground loot one it doesn't matter Literally, what you're yeah, using you and then pick up a hunt squad contract kill a squad and one of them will have one of the new guns like every time it DMZ was so easy mains. and free it took 30 minutes for me to unlock two of the new guns when where without that it would have otherwise taken me probably i don't know eight to ten hours for 35 tiers probably more yeah. 12 maybe yeah so shout out to drexler go into dmz and run shit kids pockets and then you can unlock guns that way and then level them in multiplayer yeah so much easier so a, much easier. a dmz main two buys black cell 100 percent of the time every dmz players one. are the ones that's that correct. buy every single bundle out there that's um, correct because they're either old men they're in their 40s and, and they love just spending their their money from the mill or they're just little children who can't resist and they ha also have to buy every bundle so they're always going to have it yeah 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 they have all the pay to win shit doesn't save them or help or matter, but yeah. 
We had like, yeah, like the fucking quick revive vest. I don't even know what kind of crazy shit we had, but we had it because we ran their pockets. So into the person it. that said he was going to uh, hack lag, did it sound like a child or was it like a grown man? Neither. It sounded like a probably 17. Well, I guess a child. But oh, like a, a child. 17 yeah, if you're year under 21, old, 19 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. Like a like a very young. Yeah, I miss pissing people man. off in DMZ. I really yeah. do miss it. And by the way, the first squad talked too, but they weren't toxic. They were just like, uh, are you guys going to res us? And then no. Cope, Cope laughed and said no exactly the way you just did. I mean, he said, no. no, of course not. Yeah, they always expect the res. That's how DMZ yeah. works. They expect the res. It's so cringe. Like, oh, yeah, all right, man. Like Can you res me like now? Flabbergasted. We didn't. Like, yeah. it's a given. You're gonna res them. Yeah, exactly. that's the DMZ. Like yeah, we gotta. I need to play some DMZ this season and just just to do that and experience yeah. some of the new stuff, but mostly to grief people. I need a good griefing. God, that'd be great. It's just, I mean, what a total, just a complete opposite experience going from ranked Warzone to DMZ. It's wild, it couldn't dude. be more opposite. I know. Yeah. I know. It's fucking insanely wild. Yeah, if you think SBMM is, like, fake, go play DMZ and hunt a squad, and then you'll realize how real it is. You'll be like, oh, players like this exist. Yeah, of this skill actual level. bots. Yeah, Like, a lot of them, too. A lot of them. You just never see them because like they're we, SBMM. We said that a long time ago when we tried DMZ. Like, truly, AI is more dangerous than the actual players that w that we encounter when we play DMZ. On our we way, haven't played a ton of it, but yeah, that's what we experienced it. Dude, I that funny you say that because on our way to stadium in our first raid, lag and cope got downed to AI, and we like almost Jesus died. Jesus Christ, yeah, because we didn't have our like three plate vests or anything yet. But once we got to that squad, no danger. No danger. Yeah. So unironically, the AI is actually more dangerous mm -hmm. than the players are. Yeah. Almost every time. I remember of all the DMZ we played, which is not much, but I would say maybe four to five hours total. We encountered one decent squad that I that that would have been at home in a like pubs war zone lobby where I would have been like, OK, yeah, that's like a normal squad of like competent players using competent weapons. It happened one time we were in. Oh man, I can picture where we were. I don't know where it was though. It was, uh, I think it was like the South West corner gas station of downtown. And there was like, we were like on the outskirts of downtown around there. And there was like a decent team. We killed them of course, but they were actually competent. One competent team ever, though. It's crazy. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. So. Yeah, that sounds anyway. fun. Yeah, it was fun. So just don't forget, you guys, again, if you're tempted to give Activision money, despite your moral uh, apprehension at, at doing that, such as I had, um, don't forget you can get, as long as you extract with a, a gun you don't have unlocked in DMZ, you now have the gun unlocked. So then you can play with it in multiplayer, in Warzone, you can edit attachments, you can level it, you can do all that shit. Um, it, it overrides any other kind of challenge. So the, the best thing that you can do is if one of your friends or people you play with already has the gun unlocked, they can just bring it into DMZ for you and you're in the same squad drop it you pick it up you immediately just go to the exfil chopper and if you don't die on on the way doing that then you'll have the gun unlocked it's super easy so um don't forget that but even if you don't have access to that again hunt one squad someone has bought something yeah yeah so yeah cool. so anyway the point there is that i have used the new guns now uh once we had them both unlocked uh i was like all right Cope and Lag, we're going to play Resurgence Trios now, and I'm going to level both of them at the same time in Resurgence, so I'm going to be useless for, like, until these have attachments. Um, I wasn't, by the way. First game on, I don't know. It was like the DMZ algorithm kicked in for mm. Resurgence. It hadn't caught up yet. Dog shit, gifted lobby. I don't know what happened. It was the only one. But even though I had no attachments, we won. Uh, we did quite well 
we all had double digit kills. It was it was fun. But uh the, after that I was useless for a while, yeah, to, until I got like extended mags mainly. But I've used the advancer, mine's now max level, leveled at 100% in resurgence. And my uh Karak, the new I think that's what it's called, right? The new uh sniper, semi-auto yeah. sniper. I have that close to max level. It's not max level yet, but it's now at the point where every attachment I would run, I already have unlocked, except for the 15 round mag. But I do have extendos. I have a 10 round mag. So that's pretty close as well. On that gun, I was running the Schlager Night View. I basically set it up like the signal for ranked Warzone. So nil sound 90 or whatever suppressor, uh, max velocity barrel, high velocity rounds, um, the Schlager Night View optic. I think I said that, but I'll say it again. And then. Um, 10 round mag something. instead of the oh, six round mag. mag. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so now I guess I'll talk about those guns starting with the advancer. Uh, yeah. Like we said on Thursday, it really does just feel like another Razorback. So we're Sim has actually updated their website. So we actually now have stats I've on both of these up, guns, yeah. but I have not looked at them yet. So I'm going to give you my impression of what these guns feel like and then we'll look at the data and see if it comports with what it feels like to me the advancer feels like a slightly shittier razorback high fire rate really easy to control very forgiving because of the fire rate decent time to kill not great not terrible definitely usable in warzone but by no means a meta weapon because if it were meta, it would need to either kill faster or have like no recoil, like the hemlock or something, neither yeah. of which are true, but it felt okay. It was usable. Um, and it was pretty fun because you know, you have a, uh, you have access to, I believe a, yeah, you have access to a 60 round mag, which is nice. And again, it's very forgiving, high fire rate, no recoil. It's pretty fun to use. Uh, but yeah, it's not, you know, it's not giving you any accusations. The Karak was interesting. Um, unlike the signal, you really do need to be getting like chest, upper chest, neck or headshots, or you're kind of just wasting your time. Um, whereas like a signal, I can hit someone kind of anywhere and it's going to do a decent amount of damage. But I noticed with the Karak, you definitely get more hit markers. And if you're not hitting the head, you're you're going to be punished for that. People will get away or they'll start shooting you back or something. So it matters more, I think, to be hitting those high value zones on the body with it than the signal. But also, it's got a way faster fire rate. It is easier to control for sure. It's got less recoil than a signal. At least it feels that way. Um, and it's really fun to use because when you do hit a headshot, it does a decent enough amount of damage. And if you're team shooting people, you will regularly get one shot, quote unquote, headshot downs because your teammates have already weakened them. Yeah. And a headshot does enough damage to where that puts them on the ground. And that feels really satisfying. And the advantage there over the signal is that you can, you have nine more bullets or 14 more bullets rather than four more with a signal. It's really fun to use. Um, is it good? No, probably not. I'd probably always use a signal instead of it, frankly. But uh, it's fun. It's fun to use. And it's not terrible. You know, it's not much worse than a signal. And it does do some things better. But I, I think overall, the, the value proposition there isn't worth it. So let's look at the numbers now. Yeah. Um, so I have them pulled up right here. I want to pull them up as well. So I've got it compared right now to, uh, we've got kind of like all the no recoil, low recoil ARs pulled up. So we got the FR Advancer, the ISO Hemlock, the Cast Off 545, the M13, and the Tempest Razor. Back there are others I could throw in there. I could throw in the M4 or something, but they're all, all of these guns are pretty similar now. So first damage range up until the first gun cuts off, uh, which appears to be the Hemlock. So up until 23 meters. 
Fastest killing is a cast of 545. Second fastest killing is the FR Advancer. So they're all very similar, though. So, like, FR Advancer, uh, 780 milliseconds. Hemlock at that distance, 800 millisecond time to kill. Tempest Razorback, 790. M13, 780. Cast of 545 is 736 up until that. Uh, so very, <clears throat> very similar. How is, like, the... Um, how is, like, the headshot damage looking? Uh, pretty similar with headshot damage as well. Uh, FR Advancer actually is the fastest killing one. It's if you're hitting all headshots with your not, you're not, but that goes to show you it does have a good headshot damage for the fire rate. So then kind of, like, around the next damage range, it continues. So its first damage range is pretty... Where's this first damage meters, range? 29 meters. 29, 29 meters, yeah. Which is, uh... Good. It's good. It's decent. The only one that's better is the M13, yeah. Yeah. But so then, yeah, around that range, it's... They're all so similar, basically. Uh, it, again, 910, 900, 936. I did not expect them to be this similar. Yeah. They're all similar. Yeah, and that's kind of what J-God was saying, too, is like... Weapon balance is finally to the point where you can use a lot of different guns. Now, you're still going to lose gunfights with these to, like, someone more skilled with a Cronin or a Tacky, which we'll talk a little bit about here in a minute. Uh, but if you like low recoil, low damage, easy to use guns, it definitely seems like it fits in the meta. So then let's just go all the way out to the longest damage range. Uh, fastest killing there is a Tempest Razorback, and again, they're all super similar. M13 a little faster at that point. FR Avancer, 1170 milliseconds. The Hemlock's like 1200 milliseconds. Cast off 545, just under 1200 too. So basically, completely viable gun if you want a low recoil, low damage gun. They're, the thing with those is they're just not interesting. They're not interesting to use. It's nothing different. Um... I used a custom one a couple times. I just picked it up. I haven't unlocked it. But, like, the irons suck on it, too. It's like the Razorback. The irons are dog shit. Um, so you kind of got to run an optic. I mean, they're you could use them, but they're not great. Um, but, yeah. They're not so good. Yeah. I think, shit. essentially, the gun probably is worth unlocking. Uh, I'm looking at some other just profiles here. Limb damage and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it all stays around the same. So if you like the Hemlock, the Tempest Razorback, this is another version of those, basically. I will add, though, I, I'm now comparing this to the Tac V and the Squall. In in their first damage range, the Avancer kills 780 milliseconds, and the fastest gun, the Tac V, kills in 735, which is 45 milliseconds faster. That is not that big of a difference at all. And it kind of makes me wonder that what makes the tag V worth it in that case is because it kills a lot faster outside of that. Well, not even a lot faster, but well, noticeably faster. But yeah, even like, yeah, even the tag V, which is like the fastest killing gun, basically full auto unless, before we, unless we get into LMGs, I guess. Uh, is not killing that much faster than, like, an Advancer or a Razorback. Yeah, you're right. Anything. They are all very similar now, yeah. Huh. That makes me wonder if even you just with, should be running a Razorback instead. Even with headshots. Yeah, it, I know. I was If you at hit all headshots, too. it kills faster than the Tac V and Cronin, yeah. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah, it actually might be better than I thought, looking at the numbers. Yeah, that's until yeah, it, you why know. Why am I going to run attack V and miss so many more shots? It drops off a lot at range, a lot more than the others. Um, I mean, it kills fifty milliseconds slower than attack V. Well, no, because its damage ranges are farther too. That's the other thing. It's like the attack V is still in its second range when the Avancer is in its third. That's kind of the problem. But that's only f between 40 and 44 meters, which is relevant, though. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. My um, <clears throat> my thought process on this always is if you're not sure which gun you should use, you should use the fastest theoretical TTK gun you have access to. And if you can control its recoil, keep using it. And if not, go to the next fastest and yeah. go from there. 
so you just keep going down the list of theoretical TTK speeds until you are at a gun that has the fastest theoretical TTK that you can also control reliably, that's the gun you should be using. So for some people, that's going to be attack V. For some people, it's going to be an Avancer or a Razorback or whatever. But you're not like hugely disadvantaged if you're not running attack V, even if both people are missing or hitting every shot. It's really not that big of a difference. No, it's not. Which is surprising to me, actually. Yeah, it is. Um... Something to keep in mind. It also kind of sucks. I, I want a gun that has a lot of recoil that ha has a lot faster of a CTK, like a, an EM2. We need another EM2 archetype, or we or and or for the for the OGs, the old heads, as they say, we need another Amax archetype. Yeah, for harder sure. to control, more recoil, but you get a lot more rewarded for hitting shots with a lot faster theoretical TTK. That's what, yeah. And right now, we kind of don't actually have one. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of how they've been nerfing the Cronin. Um, I would have rather had them add more recoil to it and keep the time to kill what it was at, personally. Because, yeah, now you're right. After looking at these charts, there is, like, less and less reason to run those guns because the time to kills are very close, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that really does make me wonder. I know. And and again, like the Avancer versus Attack V, it's a lot easier to control. Like a lot yeah. easier. Um, At those long ranges where you want the Attack V's TTK the most. So yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I am curious what the top 250 kids are running now. I'm going to take a look at yeah, one right now. Yeah, so we'll... Yeah, I'll talk about that next. Um, so the TAC V, people are calling that the meta gun. They're posting a lot of people are posting that. When from what I've been watching, a lot of the top two fifty players, they are using the Cronin or the TAC V. So me personally, I don't like the TAC V. I think it's too hard to use. Uh, people making builds for it are like, oh, this is a laser beam. It doesn't have recoil. Just use all the recoil attachments. Use the iron sights. It's easy to hit shots. It's not because of the fire rate. <laughs> it's a low fire rate gun. It's not easy to use. You have to use dog shit irons. You have to deal with muzzle smoke, uh, muzzle flash, losing your target. So my take is... The meta TAC V iron sight build that everyone talks about is 100,000% a controller gun. And you're thinking, oh, why is that? Why does that make any sense? Because you don't have to track as well on a controller with iron sights. If you're shooting someone at 30 meters and I'm moving left to right and you have rotational kicking in, you are hitting all of those shots without having to really readjust and think about where you're aiming because aim assist is going to stay on that target if you have rotational aim assist. Whereas me... I start shooting and I lose that guy in my irons. He's just gone. I don't see him anymore. It's difficult to use. It's very difficult to track with the muzzle smoke, the bounce on the irons. Um, so I think if I'm using that gun, I would actually prefer the optic build. And then you have technically more recoil that way, but I think it's actually easier because I could see the target and track them a little bit easier. Right. So I think that's why this is going around as like one of the meta builds is because Every good player that can control the Takavi and the Cronin, 90% of them at least are on controller, and so that is an easy gun for them to use and also do a lot of damage. So, uh, yeah, I had the time to kill pulled up. They nerfed the Cronin. I was still using it. I tried the Takavi and ranked. I just couldn't do it. I'm like, I don't like this gun. I like, I don't Perfect. care what the theoretical time to kill is. I'm missing so many shots at range because of the slow fire rate. I'm trying to use this dog shit iron sight build. You have to actually rely on hit markers because you can't track once you start shooting. If someone's on a head glitch on Vondel, see ya. I just shoot and hope I get hit markers. That's it. I don't actually see the person. It's a really annoying gun to use. Uh, so me personally, I was still using the Cronin, uh, which was nerfed hard. Pretty hard. Not... Not gutted, though, at all. Um, so here, looking at time to kill. So the big upside with the Cronin is it does have a damage range of barrel, which the TAC-V does not. So the TAC-V at 31 meters, that's the end of its first damage range, right? So up until that, TAC-V is killing at 730 milliseconds. Cronin's killing at 801. 
again, these are not that accurate because this is judging from just upper chest shots. Um, when you go to headshot at that, it gets a lot closer. Cronin and Tacvi are like basically the same because uh, Cronin's fire rate one makes it easier to hit headshots, in my opinion, much much easier to hit headshots and uh, less recoil and a higher fire rate. So you can definitely mix those in more. So you do have to take that into account. Also, when it comes to like a uh, lower torso, so your little tummy, Cronin does more damage there. So then Cronin becomes a lot faster killing. When you go to limbs as well, limb damage on the Cronin is much better. So TAC V is basically better if you're hitting upper chest shots only. And then aside from that, like at that first damage range, Cronin's better. It has better limb damage. It has better... It has good he uh, headshot damage. It's about the same as attack V. Good tummy damage. So all of that is very good. So then the, the next best thing about the Cronin is in ranked especially, you could use, or on Maws, whatever you're playing, you can put the damage range barrel on it. So the attack V is dropping off at 31 meters. The Cronin's not dropping off until 39 meters. So that's eight more meters where you have that first damage range. So up until that point, you're again then killing faster than the Cronin by like 40 milliseconds again. And then, you know, you combine that with limb shot, uh, lower torso, you can kill a lot faster than the attack V at that point. Like uh, if you're hitting all stomach shots, Cronin at 38 meters is killing at 800 milliseconds, attack V killing at 950. So you gotta look at that too. Um, and then out at range, Cronin, longest uh, longest damage range, you're killing at 1,060 milliseconds, TAC V is at 950, but hitting a shot at 80 meters with a TAC V is so much harder than hitting shots at 80 meters with a Cronin, so in my opinion, <clears throat> me personally, I'm never killing faster with a TAC V at that range, almost ever. Unless some, unless I'm mounted up and that person is not moving, I'm not getting that theoretical time to kill ever. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so they're 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 very similar now. I still prefer the Cronin. I tried to make it the Tac V work and ranked. I just couldn't. Cronin, I was still really enjoying. I could definitely tell it was worse. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I feel way more comfortable with this. That's kind of where I'm at now, too, with gun builds. Like, when it comes... Like, I still use Sim for stuff, but far less than I used to because when it comes to things like muzzle attachments, stuff like that, I equip it, tune it, go into the firing range, and test it myself because there's something I think a lot of people don't think about is, like, every build you see on, like, Warzone loadout... Warzone stats, all of those ones, they always use for like subs, like the spiral. It's some like, it's called like the spiral something. Um, I think it's a flash hider. Let me see what it's actually called here. So I can. Oh, really? Guys. A muzzle? Uh, it's a muzzle device. Yeah. So it's let me put on the Lockman sub, or it's the ISO people for sure use it for. FIFA is using the squall, by the way. Is he? Okay. Uh, so a it's a spiral user. V3.5 flash hider. Um, so, like, you know, Sim will tell you how much it helps with vertical recoil, how much it helps with horizontal recoil. The thing is, like, even if a number is higher, that means the gun overall has less total recoil. But then you have totally different recoil patterns between the actual muzzle devices. So that's why, like, I'll build a gun and I don't care what people say what muzzle device they use. I will test, like, three or four in the range and I'm like, okay, this one has more overall recoil, but, like... The first 10 shots are very easy to control, and then it kind of starts going up to the left. And that's easier to control than a gun that technically has less, or with a muzzle, it technically has less recoil, but the initial recoil is a lot higher, and then it smooths out after that. But I, you know, say, for example, I like having less initial recoil, so I build my guns that way. Um, so that's just kind of something you have to look at, too, is... Like that spiral flash hider, I tried to use that on some subs and I tested in the firing range. And I'm like, this is, it's just cap. This is a more difficult recoil pattern to control. And I don't understand why people use these muzzles. It's, it's just all weird to me. So like when you're looking at sim and these stats, you know, take that into consideration, the actual multipliers you're getting for recoil control, but test them yourself in the firing range. Cause one may not give as much recoil control, but you actually like it a lot more. So yeah. And, th and this is a difference. Yeah, and this is a difference from Warzone 1, mm -hmm. which is why it's worth pointing Absolutely. out. Because in Warzone 1, it was like, okay, you put on the commando foregrip, 
because it's the under barrel that helps the most with recoil without penalties. And it's that simple. And there aren't other options that have the same penalties and the same pros, but just a different recoil pattern. There, that didn't exist. There wasn't an alternative. Um, and then in Warzone 1 also, there may have been alternatives for muzzles, but it didn't matter because there was just a best silencer. And silencers were actually relevant back then. So it was very simple. And it was, if you want recoil control, you use this because this helps the most with recoil control. And there isn't some other attachment that also helps with recoil control to the same magnitude, but in a different way. So instead of controlling the left recoil, it controls it going right more or whatever. That's not true anymore. So yeah, now it depends. Like, uh, there isn't even a best... Even between guns, by the way. Like, usually, I like the Komodo Heavy muzzle for its recoil control. Because it's among the muzzles that gives the most overall recoil control. But, for certain guns... Like the Squall, for example, its problem is not really horizontal at all. It's mostly vertical. So I run like the Saken Tread, I think is what it's called instead. Because that one, I think overall helps less with recoil or maybe close to the same amount. But it's way more vertically. Uh, it controls it way more vertically. So that makes it easier for me to control. So yeah. it's like... Yeah, that, that, that just wasn't a problem or, or consideration, rather. In Warzone 1, it is now. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind for sure. It's like, you don't necessarily want to just use the thing that helps the most with recoil because they help with recoil to different magnitudes, but also in different ways. This one's like really good for left. This one's really good for up, whatever. Um, so yeah, something to keep in mind. With yeah. all that said, though, on the topic of ARs and shit, I guess we'll get more into that. But yeah, that, that we kind of little detour there. But uh, we'll get more. I, I have more to say on the weapon meta overall, but the point here was the advancer. So moving on to the uh, the new sniper, the Karak, I think it's called, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll pull that up Let's, against uh, uh, the Yeah, Sigma. pull that sucker up. Let's compare it to Let's the Siggy. Here. Uh, snipper rifle, Karak, snipper rifle, signal. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're going to do no attachments. Um, yeah, okay. So on these, we want to look more at not actual time to kill numbers, but more like what kind of damage, damage. it's doing. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Or bullets to kill. You can hit that button. Uh, yes, bullets to kill, yep. So headshots up to 54 meters... Both of the guns are two bullets to kill. That's very interesting. Up to 54, yeah. So Karak is doing 168 to the head and neck. Signal's doing 234 to the head, 178 to the neck. Um, yeah, so if you are hitting two headshots, like we were saying, surprisingly, we were getting a lot of those in ranked. People just like weren't reacting. It was very weird, and it was surprisingly simple to get two headshots i think what it is is people will like mount on a roof ledge and they don't have time to react and get off that mount before you but before you know those two yeah. shots come in um mm -hmm. yeah so the other th yeah interesting so the signal obviously there's the same shots to kill but if you're team shooting someone getting one headshot with the signal will get a down more often uh exactly. versus the karak That's the where relevant part your teammate could maybe put with a Cronin, two headshots into some guy, and you put a headshot into him with a Karak 300, he's like one shot. He's still not dead. Whereas with the signal, you get that one headshot on a guy in your roof, your teammate hit him two times in the head with the Cronin, he's dead like every single time. Exactly. Yes. So, interesting. Yeah. And that, yeah, that, that I think is the main point is like, if you're playing solos, I think the Karak probably would be better. Um, if it's maybe, but uh, yeah, if you're playing like trios or quads and you're going to expect to be team shooting a lot, then yeah, for sure. Uh, the, the It's not only about bullets to kill. It's about like 
Yeah, how much damage exactly? Yeah. So then when you look at here, like the limb damage too, let's say somebody is, uh, they're running across an open field. I know Mazar, you're playing Warzone ranked, you're shooting at him. With the croc, if all you see is that guy's right arm and you get hit markers, you're only doing 84 damage per shot up to 55 meters. Yes. Uh, signal, you're doing 102. So signal is a three arm shot. Upper arm, at least, is different for your fucking hand and wrist. Um, Crocs, yeah, doing 84. So the croc there is taking a, a whole ass extra shot. But, you know, it has a faster fire rate. It has lower recoil. It has more ammunition per magazine. That's so kind a big of, deal, too. Yeah. Yeah. So then let's just look at the longest damage range for both of them. Um, why did that not change? Okay, you have to change them both. Yeah, so at the longest damage range, Signal's doing 184 headshot damage. So let's say you're playing rank. There's a guy 80 meters away on a head glitch. You're still getting a two-shot headshot at that range with a Signal 50. And this is all using high explosive, or not high explosive, high velocity ammo, of course. With the croc yeah. at that longest range, you're doing 120, so you need three headshots to kill someone at that range. Uh, also, at that distance, a chest shot with the Karak is only doing 72 damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not great. That's not it's great not at good. all. Whereas the yeah. Signal, that range is doing 140. So, interesting. Yeah, again, I haven't tried these, but it still sounds quite a bit worse than the signal. I definitely want to unlock it and try it because the faster fire. It. How's the reload on it, by the way? I guess I can just actually check your reload time. Oh, um, more ammo and a faster reload time. Yeah. By like a good amount, like half a second. Faster. Yeah. Half a second. Yeah. Actually, a full second on the empty reload time. That's a massive difference. This is one of those guns that. Like, if for ranked online. Yeah, signal's probably just going to be better. Um, but for like fucking private matches, World Series of Warzone or placement matches where there are a ton of people end game, I can see the Karak being way better, actually, because everyone's inside of 55 meters at that point, like in a window, in a room, yeah, in like a, on a rooftop. If you're you team know? shooting with it, too, also with that fast fire rate and easier to Even use, if your you're teammates not, will you shoot, could, hit more shots. Yeah. That, that too, but even if they're not, like, if they're just, like, mounted on a roof or something, you can get the two headshots way more quickly with a Karak than a Signal. Yeah. And a little more easily, too. Not that that matters for any of you listening, really, but something to keep in mind. This is something, like, I actually might try it in Ranked, but I just don't expect it's going to be better than a Signal. Because I feel like when you're sniping in Ranked, you're shooting people really far away really often. And that's where the Signal's just way better than a Karak. Because yeah. then a Karak is actually like a fucking... Like a... Like an FAL. Uh, oh, that's, that's like the damage you're doing. Yeah, so like at 80 meters, if you're hitting all upper chest shots, Karak, five bullets to kill, signals only three. Yeah, let me actually compare it. I wanted to look at that. Let's look to at the, the TAC SO M. Oh. No, the TAC M. Because some people have been, there have been a group of people I see on Twitter oh, randomly no. for a long ass time that's like, why does no one talk about the TAC M? It's good. So let's take a peek. I've honestly never looked at it. Interesting. Uh, it's dog shit. Yeah, it's not good at all. Let me see. Let's check it. Like the Make sure you hit the alt range. fire selection, buddy. Oh, wait. It doesn't have full auto. It's semi auto. Yeah. Only. That's what I said. Uh, yeah, it's dog shit. So those people are just cap. Yeah, I've I was never like, maybe seen anyone using attack M ever. Not it, it's probably like DMZ players that always say it. Because I, I will see tweets from like <laughs> yeah. true game data, Warzone loadout, and then people are like, why does no one ever talk about the attack M? This shit slaps. The guy probably has half a KD or less. Yeah, yeah, that's a wild thing to say. It has a... Yeah, not good. Slower TTK than a signal at upper torso. So, it does kill the yeah. same amount of bullets at long range as the Karak, but it also probably actually has more recoil. 20 round mm -hmm. mag. Yeah. Okay. So that's... I just wanted to check on that. Any other gun there? A marksman rifle that may compare... SO14, I was thinking, just for shits and giggles. That's for sure that way like, better. Yeah. Let well, me, like, Lockman 762, SO14, those would all be way better. Yeah, but they're also a lot harder to control. A lot harder to control. Yeah. And 
then what was the other one I was just going to check? Uh, marksman rifles. I wonder how the LMS is in this game. I don't think I've ever seen someone use that either, dog shit. Okay, yeah. Yeah. LMS and then Tempest Torrent. Uh, also dog shit, yeah. The worst ground loot gun in fucking Resurgence, by the way. I, God, it sucks. I pick that up sometimes. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great, but you get drawn to it because I think it's a five attachment ground loot. It is. It's, so it's like got the a nice optic. legendary. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, cool, legendary gun. I pick well, it up. I'm like, oh. Too much. It would actually okay. be good if they just put a red dot on it. That but is, it, yeah, the, that is it. That optic is just way too much recoil, especially early game. Like, come on, dude. I don't need this. Yeah. Not sniping people with this stop it anyway yeah point is though uh i've used again the karak and the and the uh avancer like in resurgence exclusively for like hours yesterday and it was a lot of fun i was having a lot of fun with the karak the avancer is just another full auto gun so i was having an an unexpected amount of fun with that but the Karak was a lot of fun. I was just like mounting up, or excuse me, like going prone on like random roofs and just getting third party kills like easily. Uh, it was fun. It, it's You were on the other side of the map gun. just like putting one bullet into random people and stealing their kill basically. Yeah, third yes, I was, yeah. There, there would be two teams fighting at like fucking museum or whatever and I'd just be on some random roof wa yeah. watching them fight each other and I'd just like take a little bloop little pot shot at Wonder somebody. Wonder how the velocity is, if the velocity is any better. Probably not. Probably not better than a signal, yeah, but they're probably it feels the good. Base velocity. I mean, oh my god. I put on the full velocity. It's base velocity is so. almost 200 meters per second more than the signal, actually. Really? Interesting. Yeah, let me take a peek. So then you put on uh, where's the, the high things. velocity ammo and Mil then the barrel. 90. And then nil yeah. sound. So then let's check the Karak, which would be, I don't know what the barrel is going to be called. Heavy on that. tack 300. Okay, high velocity, heavy tack 300, and then nil sound also. Holy shit. Yeah, Karak's 1849. Yeah. That's some Warzone 1 velocity. Yeah. Signal's only 1190. Wow. That is a big ass difference at range. Shooting someone moving at range, trouble is you're not usually actually doing that in Warzone 2, anyways. That doesn't happen that often, it feels. Even if they do, everyone that has is smoke. That relevant, though. You're right. That That's is an interesting thing to think this about. This is like the highest velocity gun. I'm not kidding. I think I've ever looked at in Warzone. That I've ever actually yeah, put attachments might on be. and built. Might be. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, you're I hitting think that's targets. the right barrel, by the way. Because I think there's some barrels that don't allow a muzzle. And I don't think the website would know that. So, I think it's that barrel. Yeah. I use the highest velocity barrel I can with the nil sound suppressor. So I don't I don't know if that is in fact it's either that or it's the thirty inch flint line. One of those two. I think it no, is. No, yeah. Heavy tack, tack thirty though. increases the damage range and also gives you three hundred and eighty nine velocity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm That is weird yeah, how it's so much different sure than all the other guns. Like it almost seems bugged that it's that high. I honestly it's a lot. can't believe that. It's for sure a lot. Yeah. Dude, that's that kind of weird, isn't it? That is kind of weird. Because that does make it a lot easier to shoot people far away and moving. Even a Victus, only 1536. This is semi auto and it's 1850. That's crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, again, it's not really going to give you a reason to like run it if you otherwise wouldn't, but that's interesting. It has such high velocity. It's fun to use, man. And that, that velocity makes sense because it does feel easy to hit shots. Like yeah. it's point and click for sure. Mm. Like always. Just don't miss, so don't miss click. Yeah, if your reticle's on them, it's basically hit scan. That um, would make me want how's the default scope on it? Uh like a standard sniper scope? A lot of zoom. Yeah, a lot of That would of make zoom. me want to actually run the default instead of using the Schlager night view, because that's gonna be way less zoom. If it has that good of velocity, you can actually hit shots at that range. I don't know how the recoil that. would be with it, though. That's true. I don't yeah. really remember. Yeah. Because it has, like, a pretty fucking fast fire rate. You kind of want to take advantage of that by, yeah. you know, zooming less. But maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so the new guns, uh, you know, I don't know. They're cool, but not game-breaking or anything. So now let's move on to Warzone. So, yeah. First impressions oh, wait, on Warzone. There were SMG changes. Let me just cover those real quick. 
because uh, that meta is all kind of different too. So let me just talk about that real quick. So let me pull up the Lockman sub. Let me pull up the ISO. Let me pull up the... Some people... I'm not even going to pull up the Vaz. I'm not, I'll pull it up actually. And then the Vel. Um, so Lockman sub got nerfed. I don't really even remember what changed. It was not a big nerf. On, it was, I think, to close damage range was nerfed. I think that was it. Okay, so I think they lied, because the damage drop-off is 8 meters, and I'm almost positive that's what it was before. Max so. damage range decreased. Okay, this is what it was. Max damage range decreased, which doesn't matter at all. Oh, wait, yes, that matters a lot, actually. Yeah, that's the first damage range. And then close mid damage range decreased. So, yeah, maybe they just lied. I don't know. Maybe it was Weird. 9 meters before. I don't know. But, yeah, Lockman is still the fastest killing up to 8 meters. That ISO 603 is still the same. Vaz 616. Vel almost 700. Uh, of course, the upside of the Vel, again, is that that damage range extends to 13 meters. So, at 13 meters, it's f between, like, 9 and 13. It kills faster than all those other SMGs. Um, I'll tell you real quick. I tried it. I... I just don't like the Vel in this game. Something about it feels weird. And when I was kind of looking at Sim here, it may be because the it has miserable limb damage. So it goes from like mm. pretty good to being like really dog shit, even up to that first damage range. Because oh, the limb damage. Right. I, I don't know yeah. what it is. But, but the thing is like on ranked late game, if you're fighting in buildings, if you have a Vel, you're actually losing 100% of the gunfights if the other guy has a ISO or Lockman sub. Because that's like almost always within that first damage range. Um, this happened to, we were playing ranked, and in one of the games, Jake got stuck with a gas mask animation. So he's shooting, right? And the game feels the need to rip off his gas mask while he's firing. He's not ADS, though, so it rips it off anyway. So he's trying to like spray. He was going in and out of ADS. So he gets the gas mask animation. He's spraying this guy point blank range. He must actually get like eight hit markers on the guy. He ends up losing the gunfight. I think the guy had an ISO or something. Like gunfights mm -hmm. like that, you will never win with a Vel. It doesn't matter what you do, you're losing all of those. So like late game ranked, close range, you're just, you're never winning a gunfight. So uh, some people think it's meta. I still personally don't, don't like it. Uh, Lockman just feels the best to me still. I don't know. It's the easiest to control. Um, ISO has too much recoil. Vaznev kind of just shock now. It ends up being... It's not the yeah, best at anything. Is, yeah. The only reason you'd... I think if you're on a controller, I would probably run a Vaznev. Because you can get I'm running insane an ISO on controller. ADS strafe and like the same TTK inside of 8 meters. I think you get really but, good strafe on an ISO too, don't you? I think you can build oh, maybe the habit you do. Yeah, one. Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you do. Because people usually use that strafe stock on it. So if you're on controller, and I would better reload in that one thousand yeah. percent be using an ISO right now. You're killing the fastest up close, and then a little bit slower in the. I, yeah, I don't know. Vel just, I it doesn't feel good to me. I'm not sure what it is. I don't like the gun. But anyways, sorry to mention yeah. that. Yeah. So I guess now while we're on the topic, we might as well just do this now. Uh, the gun balance in general. So, um, going back to the ARs, which is what I was going to say earlier. Is the long range meta balanced right now? For sure. What am I, Fantano? The long range meta right now, very balanced. But it's also fucking boring because every gun is the same now. Um... There really isn't that much of it. There is no different. There's no Kilo versus Amax right now. Not even fucking close. Again, unless we talk about LMGs, but LMGs are so different that I don't think they should be in this discussion. In other words, I think there should be an AR with a lot of recoil that has a lot faster of a theoretical TTK. And there isn't one right now at all. The differences are like within a hundred milliseconds. Uh, and when we have a time to kill, that's like 700 to 900 long range, then a, t a time to kill where uh, of 50 milliseconds better for attack V versus a fucking Tempest Razorback, which is much easier to control. is kind of stupid, frankly. And all the guns are just kind of the same. Um, they feel different. But their time to kill is too similar for that reason. Uh, I think the TAC-V, for example, 
should either have less recoil than it has right now, or it should kill faster than it does right now. I would much prefer the latter, because right now there just isn't much identity in the long range meta. So on the one hand, it is good that you can use you can use actually probably seven different ARs and you're not going to be disadvantaged massively using any of them. Like they're all viable yeah. and fine. But the downside of that is that they're all killing so fucking similarly. And when we look at the low recoil ARs too, Tempest Razorback versus a Avancer versus a Hemlock versus a Lockman 556. They all kill within fucking five milliseconds and they're all easy to control. What are we doing? These guns have no identity anymore because they all kill the same speed. And, and in those cases, they're all equally easy to control. It's fucking boring. It's boring. There need to be a cohort of guns that are very low recoil, very easy to control, and kill at a decent TTK. And there needs to be a separate cohort of guns of ARs or battle rifles, not LMGs in other words, that kill markedly faster, maybe in the maybe in its longest damage range, upper chest it kills actually 100 milliseconds faster. And it also has more attractive headshot multipliers. And it has to have way more recoil. We need a cohort of guns like that too. And right now we just don't. I don't see a reason actually anymore after looking at these numbers to run attack V ever. It doesn't make sense. The amount of extra recoil you're incurring for a very negligible theoretical TTK boost is not worth it to me at all. Cronin Squall, it is worth it because of its limb multipliers being attractive. And you're going to hit limbs a lot. So that makes sense. But uh, even that isn't killing quickly enough to be interesting to me. I think it needs more recoil and a faster TTK. Yeah. Along with the Tac V. And you can pick the guns. I don't care if it's this gun in particular that functions that way. But again, we need something like an EM2 that has like a ton of recoil, but it fucking fries if you're able to mount up and land all those shots. And we don't have that. Not even close. This is so fucking boring. And it kind of feels like uh, the Caldera. It doesn't feel like the Caldera meta because you're not just landing every shot at 200 meters. No, I but, still prefer this to the Caldera era for sure. Yeah, but it feels similar in, in, in this way in that there are a bunch of full auto ARs that don't have recoil, that kill at the same time as each other, and they all feel the same. And it's kind of annoying. I don't like it, but it is balanced. I, I'd rather that, I guess I would rather this than going back to the RPK meta, where there was, there were guns, and they were all dog shit since the RPK existed, and it killed like 2,000 milliseconds faster than everything else at every range on every hitbox. It was dumb. So yeah, like I, I, this is better than everyone having to use one gun, but this is, there have been better long range metas. Mainly, again, I think the gold standard is Amax versus Kilo. That was a very cool uh, and balanced, I would say, long range meta. Even though it was only two guns, we could do better than that. We'd have Kilo and similar to Kilo. We could have a, a, a sliding scale. It's like Kilo has no recoil and a one second TTK. And then fucking M4 has a little tiny bit of recoil and like a 950 millisecond TTK. And then, you know, pick five other guns. And then eventually you get to an EM2 where it has like a 785 millisecond TTK, but just a fuck ton of recoil. So then you could like pick where you want to go. How much recoil do you want? And how much TTK do you yeah. want? But we don't even have remotely fucking close to anything like that right now. I agree kind of with boring. you. Yeah, like that's it's that's the <clears throat> the tack of you right now to an extent. But you're right. The time to kill is close enough that it really doesn't make sense. Like I don't know. I wish there was a way. At least give it a headshot multiplier to look at stats. Like, do they have? 
Do they have Warzone 1? I guess they do. I, it wouldn't show actually at this point because the EM2 was gutted so hard. But I'm very curious to know at one point in Caldera when we were using the EM2, how much faster the theoretical time to kill was than like an automaton like or something. I would Because it felt like it was like 300 milliseconds faster at like any given damage range. But it, it was, was hard lot. to use. And you didn't have the advantage of that six times sniper scope on it too. So it was like kind of a trade-off, but yeah, you are. Oh yeah, you're that's right. another thing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a shame. Just a shame. Yeah, but like you know, it's yeah. I I don't want. We don't need more of these low recoil guns like the Avancer we got. It's just not interesting. Give me a heavy, chunky gun that recoils a lot and has fucking seventy headshot damage or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I yeah. like the Cronin so much, and I just want to continue using it. And I am continuing to use it, by the way. Even after looking at these numbers, playing ranked with it yesterday, I still felt that was I was doing the best with that gun. I think you I think you nailed why it's still popular and good is because its limb multipliers are just better than all the other options. Yeah. And you're gonna be hitting a lot of limbs far away. Yep. It, like it's just gonna happen if yeah when, if, yeah if people are running 90 degrees to you like even if you are hitting upper chest it's like you're on the right vertical plane but their arms in the way you're yeah. hitting the arm you know yeah so yeah or if you you're like that. uh you know someone you're even mounted up and you're looking at some guy straight on that first bullet you're aiming at his chest you're gonna hit his upper chest second bullet's gonna recoil up and hit his left arm or something because it's gonna go up to the left and so then you're gonna get that limb damage still so there's a lot of other there's a lot of factors basically though I think the TLDR here, there are a lot of viable guns like you said at the beginning. Try the gun with like the fastest theoretical time to kill. If you can't control it, just keep going on. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I if you, if you don't think you're the most skilled player and you probably know that if you're that type of player, I personally would not even bother with Attack V. I think it's going to be too hard for you to use. S try the Cronin if you still think that is hard to use. Look on Sim. Start looking for other options. Um, Tempest, Razorback, something. Just start going down the list. But yeah, there's now it really is the point in Warzone 2 where you can run what you're most comfortable with. It's not like Season 1 where you ran the Fennec and nothing else. You ran the Fennec or the dual Akimbo, you ran the Akimbo X12s or the P890s or something. Yeah. There was one mm -hmm. option. Now you have numerous options. Do whatever fits your play style the most and what you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which is, yeah, I mean, again... It's cool, but it's just boring. I, I I just wish there were, I wish there were some high risk, high reward, long range guns right now, but there aren't. Um, yeah. In terms of SMGs, I think the SMG balance is better. Well, I think it's more interesting. I think the SMG balance balance is good, kind of. Is it? No, I don't. I think the Lockman sub is still too good for how easy it is to use too. Yeah, but it's after like that first damage range, it is the worst. And it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. But eight meters is often far enough. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, I, don't I, know I, I just still feel that's why I'm using the Cronin and Lockman still. Uh, I feel the most comfortable with them, and it's probably largely in part that's what I'm used to running. That's what I've been running. So I'm just so used to the recoil patterns and how the guns feel. And yeah, Vel just doesn't feel good to me. If you do good with it, use it. If you do good with the ISO, definitely use it because I find that gun difficult to control at like 10, 12 meters even. And if you can and hit then, all your shots yeah, with I it, it's it. way better than the Lockman. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah J God did put out a close range video and he had said, he's like, you know, it's you can honestly run any SMG at this point. There are downsides to many of them. Mini box like the one he's like, I don't even know what they're doing with this gun because he was probably talking about how they nerfed it this season too. He's like, I don't know what they're doing with this gun, mini box, but like uh, MX9 still, that does really well. It just has a small mag, so you can't use it in trios and quads. But he went down the whole list and he's like, every SMG is at least viable and you can use all of them now pretty much. Even the Fennec got buffed this season, but I'm not using it because the fire rate and the small mag. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would, top three right now are still definitely Lockman Sub. ISO and Vel, though, in my opinion. Yeah, and the SMGs, yeah, I guess I do prefer the SMG balance right now to the long range balance then, because at least there's a Vel where it's like there's a noticeable upside and a noticeable downside. There's a big trade off, and depending on what you want to do, you'll run it or not. For example, 
if I'm playing ranked Moz and I'm using a signal, I'm probably using a Vel with it because I really want that extra damage ranges. Um, but if I'm using like a Squall, then I'm certainly not running a Vel because now I don't care as much about that damage range. I'll use a Lockman sub instead. Um, and that's cool. I, I like guns that have trade-offs like that. They could do that with the long-range meta. They're just choosing not to. That's another dimension yeah. on which they could balance, by the way, is damage ranges. Like, you could have a Vel equivalent in ARs. Like, let's say you gave the Hemlock a 40 millisecond slower TTK in its first damage range than it has now. But you also doubled it. So, like, okay, it's going to kill faster than most ARs up to 29 meters. But between 29 meters and fucking 55, it actually kills faster because it's still at its first damage range. That would be cool. And that would be like a big trade off. And you'd have to think about whether you want to run it or not. What map are you on? What guns are you using with it? Et cetera, what's your play style? Uh, but they've just chosen not to do that. They're all the same. Like, it's fucking boring. I, I don't know. But anyway, it, it's at least there's not something grossly overpowered or anything. So as far as Infinity Ward and how well they can do anything, I'll take it. So seems like now Raven's doing this now, judging from the patch notes, how they write why they're doing oh, really? things now. Mm, That's why yeah. I think this set of patch notes, especially I think the last one, too, had a lot of that. And there was like, this is why we're doing this. Yes, we've heard complaints about the signal. We think it's fine. There's no way Infinity Ward's doing any of that. So I think Raven's doing this shit now. Yeah. If Raven could just get the numbers, then then we'd be chilling. But anyway, moving on to Warzone generally. Uh, so that was kind of already Warzone generally, but uh, now there are some other things. Uh, starting with the slide. Yeah. So I still I now I'm so in the habit of dolphin diving that I just have not been sliding very often. I need to get myself back in that habit again. But I didn't play any ranked since season five launched. And that's the only place where I think I'd want to be sliding pretty often. Cause like I, I play mostly Vondel with some Ashika and on both of those maps, if I'm in a situation where I want to slide, I'm probably by some cover that in that case, I'd rather just dive into the cover. Um, so that's kind of all I've been doing. I haven't had like a need to get used to the slide. Well, once I get to ranked, I'm gonna need to start getting used to it again. But yeah, what is your what is your take on yeah, this? Yeah, uh, we pretty much talked about it on Thursday. Uh, a lot of these things actually we're gonna mention here shouldn't take too long. We've already talked about most of them since you know again this is season four and three quarters. It's not season five, so the slide is viable and nice. Uh, not much more to say past that. I use it often, like I said on Thursday. I've been using it to kind of slide around corners now and like get used to that timing to shoot people. Um, so yeah, I do it more. You, it feels definitely better. Um, and with the jumping changes, by the way, I play, I tried to notice it yesterday and I just never <laughs> could. I don't know. I did yeah. also fall off some roofs and stuff sometimes on purpose to test the, how, how you're stuck in the mud after. And it actually does feel better. Like I was jumping off some things that I thought I wouldn't be able to move. And I was like almost immediately moving again. So I was like, okay, maybe it is a little noticeable. It just depends what height you, uh, you fall at. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, the slide pretty good. Why isn't anyone using the boss P? I don't like how it feels. I don't like the recoil pattern. It's got like a weird horizontal recoil to it. In I my need opinion. to set one up because, yeah, it does what the Vel does, but just better. There were some people making videos about it saying how it's like in the meta now, but something has just always felt off about that gun to me. And it's not even like the damage it did. It feels like a weird recoil pattern tied in with the iron sights i don't know the only advantage of the vel is a better headshot water. multiplier up to 13 meters yeah okay so if any of you are listening to this and you've been running the vel because you like that it has extra damage range and a decent enough ttk try the boss p because it has a better ttk everywhere and its first damage range is 19 meters instead of the Vel's 13. It's actually just better. Why did no one tell me this? Yeah, good comms, Jaken in chat for saying that. I wonder if it's something to do with its attachment selection. 
Maybe it has dog shit attachments or something. But I don't know. I, it doesn't look that way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why people have had their dicks hard about the Vel then. Maybe they just didn't have the boss P unlocked. Hmm. Or maybe it's way harder to control. Mag size? Let me see. Magazine. I mean, 10 fewer rounds mag, that's not that big of a deal. I can work with 50. Yeah. So yeah, I would encourage anyone who's using a Vel to try the boss P in every class you're using the Vel in right now and see if you'd like it better. Because on paper, it's better in every fucking way. So, yeah. Uh, that's weird. So, yeah. I, I'm actually kind of mad at everyone I play with who just didn't bring that out. Bring that up, rather. So, um... Interesting. Okay. Anyway, yeah, moving on. Warzone generally. Uh, next point is bomb drones. Uh, there are bomb drones on Vondel. I don't know if they added these back again, because I don't recall seeing them before Season 5, and I've seen quite a few. Uh, which is annoying. Take bomb drones out of the game. But I've used bomb drones. I used probably like five yesterday. Did not get a kill a down once with it. So I don't know if just everyone uses Bomb Squad, the perk, or if they Bomb Drones are just dog shit now based on what they changed, but they're not getting me downs ever, which I'll take. So, yeah, uh, that's good. Bomb Drones seem to be dog shit, which I'll take uh, for sure, obviously. Yeah, I think... Um Remember last season when I was, <coughs> when I was saying that? I was like, <coughs> I'm only getting one-shot downs with them. Um, I think that whole time, I think they were, I think it's doing like 299 damage now or something. Cause like yesterday when we were playing, I got, I used a bomb drone twice and got two downs with it. But, yesterday? but yeah, but it's like, it's definitely uh, isn't one tapping people fully played it. I know that. I just don't know how much damage it does. I feel like it's okay. like actually 299 or something. I think but it's they're, less than that. They're too Unless, common. That's for sure. Yeah. They're too common. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, two seven. Okay, yeah, maybe I just got lucky or un well, unlucky because I didn't get a single down, so everyone mm -hmm. could have been full plated or using the perk or both. I don't know, but yeah. anyway, yeah, kind of a minor point there. Oh, because yeah. when it comes to bomb squad or yeah, bomb squad is that what you're talking about? Mm hmm. I think that might be what's going on since they buffed yeah. that. Pe more or knowing Infinity Ward, bomb squad doesn't change the damage taken from drones anyways yeah it's possible who knows That's cool. i don't know shout out infinity ward they don't tell us anything yeah uh moving on to ashika i played like two games of ashika um they still haven't done the things we wanted like two seasons ago but uh at least there's some favorite supply boxes on it now and the reinforcement flare so that immediately makes the island better and as i said on thursday i still hundred thousand percent prefer vondal i think it's a way more fun and interesting map uh, but you know, it's getting to the point where since that's all I've been playing recently, it's fun to mix it back in with the Sheikah. So that combined with the fortress, we're going to be getting to at some point this season. I think that'll be fun to rotate between the three. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad a got those changes. And by the way, this isn't a season five observation, but season five still has it and we will continue to have it. The. The rotation playlist. So yeah, before uh, yesterday when I was playing with Lag and Cope, we were playing for a while before a fourth got on. So we were just queuing for the Resurgence rotation trios playlist. And I gotta say, man, I like it. It's growing on me. You, it seems like you play each map every other game, and that is cool. And it's nice. And Ashika's yeah. not bad enough of a map to where I just want to play Vondel 24-7. I did want to play tw Vondel 24-7 when it was new, but like Tanner just said, i played enough of it now to where I would appreciate mixing it up a little bit. And the rotation playlist is doing a good job of doing that. It's like it, each map feels kind of like fresh and interesting and new when you get it. Not exactly, but you know, it, it, it mixes it up within a session and it's and it's good and it's fun and again i love ashika when i don't have to go to castle it's that simple and then if i have to go to castle dog shit map immediately ruined the game's immediately ruined so you know the degree to which i don't have to be at castle is the degree to which i have fun on ashika and i enjoy that map a lot but you know sometimes it goes castle so 
It does go but castle, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's not like season five specific. But once we get Fortress 2, that'll make the ro rotation playlist very interesting. Um, Because then you're going to have a lot of variety in a sesh if, if you want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. It's cool. I like that. Um, next is the portable balloons. They change them, so you deploy them more quickly now. Um, I think I remember before the change, you had to press the field upgrade button, and then you had to press the repel button. I don't know if I that's don't true. I think so. That doesn't sound right. I think it was just one button. Okay. Maybe remember. it was. Either way, it's definitely just one button. Either way, it's definitely just one button now. You press the field upgrade button, and your guy takes it out, and you immediately just start going up. It is quite a bit faster of a process. It, and you do go quite a bit higher than you used to. My test for this, my benchmark for whether it was worth using or not, was can I loot this at the middle of the stadium in the field and get to the roof of stadium? Yes, I can, and therefore it's worth using. I think it's pretty good now. It's decent. It's worth using. I would still prefer a portable balloon like we had in Warzone 1 where you could really fucking move your character. Yep. Because it's actually like a different field upgrade and I don't think they're even comparable, really. The portable balloon in Warzone 2 is a field upgrade you use to get to a roof quickly. The balloon, the portable balloon in Warzone 1 was a field upgrade you used to go to a different PLI quickly. And that's never happening with this balloon. But you know what? That's okay. It just serves a different purpose. So maybe what I would say is in, in addition to the portable redeploy drone we have, add another field upgrade that is a portable actual balloon where you throw it on the ground and then your whole team can use it, and you have to press the repel button, and it does what the portable balloon of Warzone 1 did. If we had both field upgrades, that would be very cool. But I think it's a mistake to compare this to the portable balloon of Warzone 1, because its intended use isn't even the same. It's yeah. just to get you up. It's not to get you Yeah, away. it doesn't get you very far. It gets you yeah. more up than anything. You're right. Exactly. Um, Which I think is okay, because now it's worth using for that purpose now. Where before it was literally useless. Yeah, know what it's good for, too, the more I think about it, is when we were playing ranked, there were quite a few teams where you would see two people using them at once. Because you see them on the map, like, no matter where you are. Like, you'll see a little red icon as it moves, and that means someone is, like, taking theirs. And we were running into some teams where we'd see two people that. using these at once. Um, but, yeah, like, getting up, that's a good... It's a good thing to hold on to, especially because they're so common. Like, I swear to God, if you open a duffel bag... Nine out of ten times, there's one in there. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's a guaranteed there spawn in duffel bags. Uh, it'd be good for somewhere like downtown, kind of late game. Instead of having to run up a staircase, your whole team has those. You pop those, you can get on one of the roofs right there, just like immediately if you're getting chased or something. Or if you're chasing guys into the building, they're running up the stairs. Hit your little balloons, get up on the roof. There are a lot of things you can do with them. They're, they're definitely better. Uh, yeah, still not quite as good as I would like them to be, but they improve them quite a bit. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm glad they're worth using now. So, anyway. Um, next is the buy station positioning on Moz. So, as far as the patch notes said, they did not change the number of buy stations on El Mazra, but they changed their locations. So, in theory, we have the same number of buy stations and they are still static but they are now static in different positions than they used to be. I don't know what my opinion on this is. I haven't played mods yet, but did you notice this? And how were the changes? If so. It feels like actually, I think every single buy station moved. Like every single one that I can think of that we went to move positions. Um, yeah, again, it's too kind of too early to tell. Some of them, like before a lot of them would be out in the open. Okay, so for example, the one at uh, Rohan Oil that was below that one big silo, whatever those things are called, you know, 
Like the one in the middle of Rohan. It yes, was right yeah, below yeah, the yeah. So that yes. one, pretty sure that is not there anymore, and it moved to the south. So like going towards like Hydro, like that type of POI, it's in oh. a little random building now. So they've moved a lot of them inside. There was another one it's we were inside. hitting. Inside? Oh, wow. There was another one we were hitting like in downtown that was in kind of like that parking garage on the southwest side of downtown. That one now is inside of a like four floor apartment building where you can get on the bottom floor or the roof of that it's inside the garage in that building now so i think in general they move them more to be in places of cover which i guess i'm a fan of it's just you you have to get used to it because it's like we know where all the buys were you didn't have to look at the map or most of them in the areas we go to and then now all of them are moved so yeah uh, it seems to be fine for now just something you got to get used to i i haven't found anything that i've hated so far but also, most of the, we went to like Tarak, we went to Rohan a lot, we went to Hydro. They moved the Hydro one. I'm not a fan of where that one is now. There used to be the one kind of out in the open on a corner by where there would often be a balloon. I know exactly what you're like saying. Like when you're yeah. coming from the tents to the east of Hydro. Yeah. Um, that one has moved and it's like more in in between all of like the houses and stuff now i think which is actually just worse because then it just gets camped more often i thought that one was good where it was at and now i think that one's placed worse than it was so i don't know they're just different okay interesting yeah definitely yeah, not I more of them if they keep them static and they have the same number i think this is like fun yeah my the more interesting question is is this something they plan on regularly doing like each new season, they change up where the buys are. That would be weird. Like, I wonder yeah. what the impetus was for this at all. Because if they wanted to add or subtract from the total number of buys, that's one thing. But like, keep the same number, keep them static, and move them a little bit. Like, that's kind of a weird decision. Why would you do that? You know, just yeah. to freshen things up? I might be okay with that. But I, but you know, I I don't know. I, I I just like to see. I'm curious in the future if they're going to continue doing this every season. And I'm not even necessarily opposed to them doing it every season. Yeah, static for a full season, that's good enough to like learn them and mm -hmm. like get the benefits of staticness. You know. Yeah. I think that would be okay. Yeah. As long as they're not picking miserable locations for the buys. But to their credit, the buy stations are. In a pretty good spot, I would say, on Moz. Yeah. In terms of number and the fact that they're static. And, so I often still you know. feel like there needs to be more of them, but maybe, like, I want more on paper, but it may end up... I don't know. If there are more of them, maybe make it so people could get away too easily and then, like, buy teammates back and stuff. I don't know. I think there's, like, a... There's a lot that could go wrong if you have too many of them. So maybe it's enough, but just so many times I look at a map and I'm like, oh my god, man, I have to go so far to a buy. But maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, moving on, yeah. next thing here. Reinforcement flares are now on Moz. Uh, they're in ranked play, too. I have played ranked, by the way. It was on launch day. I, yeah, I've been you saying I haven't, yesterday. but I did. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, reinforcement flares and buy stations. I like the idea... Um, we often, we've used them late game. We've bought them before late game in order to hold on to one. They're $5,000. There's one per buy station. Um, I think it's good and ranked. It's fine and ranked. The only thing I would like to see is they do not need a spawn as often as they do. They're just way too common. Like I died and lost my gulag at one point yesterday. Instead of having to like go to a buy and spend money, uh, Jake just looted like four medicine cabinets and found one and it just like immediately got me back like a minute and a half later. So I don't know. Sometimes I feel like there are too many, especially like late game. You see people popping them all the time. Uh, one game yesterday with me lag and Jake, I think all of us had one in the game and Jake ended up popping his right before he died. I think lag had already died. Couldn't use it. I had died first. Um, and it got me back and I was able to kind of float and then land, kill a guy and end up get third place. But I don't know. I just, I kind of feel like they're too, I feel like they're too common. Maybe it makes the game more fun and exciting late game. Cause there's going to be more people that way and more people being bought back. Maybe it's okay too. Cause they changed the height at which you redeploy in Moz a while back. So you can't like float up as high as you it used to be able to. It is dangerous to get flared even late game. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe. it is. And it's also, you know, the animation sucks for it. It takes a while. You can't do anything. It's kind of like a last resort type thing. So, yeah, maybe it's maybe the spawn rate's fine. I think you're I think you're I think you're right to be worried about it. But I think it's one of those things where we just need more time with it to see. Uh, yeah, I, guess I think it's a little too. early to tell. If a lot of times when we hit them, it's like they when we know we're going to die. Like Jake pretty much knew he was going to die. He had no plates. I think he was in the gas at that point. We were getting shot at by from like two different angles, and he barely got the flare off in time. So it's kind of one of those things like you trade your life because you're about to die for a guy who's ending up floating, and he's probably going to land and just also die, maybe grab some loot. So maybe if anything, it gets you a little bit higher placement. But um, yeah, it's definitely... There's a place for it in ranked. I don't I don't disagree with it being there. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. Yeah. Espe like even if they took it out of the ground loot completely, it is cool that it's purchasable and there's only one at a buy. Cuz the buys are dangerous the later into the game you yeah. go. You know. So it, it's a gamble like okay, fuck. We could get our teammate back if we go to this buy, but number 1 is the flare even still in stock? And number two, are there some kids camping this? Because they very well could be, you know. So yeah, like I like I like that they're in. I agree with you there. The, if anything, like you said, there might be a, a they might be too common as ground loot, yeah. but they're not so common that it's obvious there are too many, and that's good. We're not sure yet if they're too common. Yeah. So. Oh. Uh yeah. So moving on, my last thing here. Um. Ranked SR got some changes. So, uh, basically now, first place, you get 150 SR, whereas before it was 100. Second place now, I think you get 125, and you used to get, like, 80 or something. Third place now, you get 100, and that used to be 60, I believe. So now you can get third place, and that's the same as getting a win last season. So, from my point of view, when it's us doing well, I like it. I think the changes are good. So, yeah. I can't see a definite downside so far but we did just so happen yesterday to have like the most boring two hours of ranked i've ever played i mean it was so boring that i think that's kind of the reason we all just got off because like these games just aren't fun so uh not necessarily directly related to the sr changes but every single team we would start fighting we would shoot at immediately just run away it was so weird and i'm like why is why are you guys not fighting it started with this one team in this one match thing we started shooting at them and there were three of them by the way and they just fucking bounced and it was early enough in the game where there were still probably like a hundred players left so it's like are they running to get higher placement i don't know it's probably more just we had unlucky boring matches but there may be something there where people are now going to play more ratty and more campy and more dog shit just because they want that extra win sr because they know they're not True. good enough to win gunfights and get by that way so they're just trying to stay as alive as long as possible and they were not good so that's the thing is like it wasn't annoying because we were getting destroyed it was annoying because we would start shooting at people these guys would bounce they would get away from us so quickly they would throw the most random prox mines down so like last thing we do we like okay he ran in the gas station so we'd run outside i'd run by the gas station pump he threw a prox mine in the middle of the open i run around the corner i hit it it's like what are you doing uh and then finally we were like able to down him kill him we kept chasing he had more teammates that were further ahead we chased these guys i'm not exaggerating from graveyard to interchange we ran and chased them. Holy they ran shit. away that entire time. We finally fold one of them. Uh, we finally got to interchange. The guy almost got away from us. We finally killed him. And then this guy has the audacity to be like, it's the same fucking guys. Well, yeah, we started fighting you 10 minutes ago. Stop running then. Of course it's still us. Like, what are we going to do? So this Did happened like two or out? three games in a row. Yes, they had all their <laughs> shit. I don't know what they were doing. This happened yeah. like two or three games in a row. Um... And everyone was doing this and it was very, it was very, very weird. Like we, we were popping UAVs, hitting balloons, trying to chase people down. We would land on different people, start shooting them. They'd be gone. And just every time we'd be like, all of us be like, what the fuck is going on today? No one wants to fight. Like it was to the point where like one match I remember looking, I had like two kills. I think Jake had two and lag had like one or something. 
And all of us had like 3,000 damage with those kills because we just kept shooting them, cracking their plates. That's they would run crazy. away. They would get away. It was so, so fucking boring. So all of that would happen. Finally, we'd get to late game. We'd be so bored that we'd make dumb choices. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to actually ha get in a gunfight. I'm so fucking bored. I don't care if we lose. I'm not going to lose SR this match. We've already gained like at something dog shit, at least like 30, 40 SR. There's like 70 people left. Like I'm so bored. I just want to fight someone. And then what happens is we see one team in a car. We're thinking it's going to be some pussies that are running away again. We start shooting at the car, smile. They hop out. They were all dead and 45 seconds and all of them have season four iridescent calling cards and they're all level 50 oh, no. so it's like we had either players that would not fight and just continue to run away and then finally we would get bored and make dumb decisions because we just want to fight someone and it'd be like the best team in the lobby every time yeah. so i don't know if that's just unlucky games or if it's because some of these lower skilled players are now trying to really hard to get higher placement so they could rank up uh there was another match too that ended at sawa village What's the place that's underwater? Is that Sawa? Uh, look I'll look. Yeah. Sawa Village. We had a yeah. mass that ended there. We were fighting, so that we were in one of the buildings. awful, by the way. Yeah, we were in one of the buildings. Um, Jake had bought me back, so I think I had like ground looter, like some guy's dog shit trash guns. We were fighting in one of the big apartment buildings, bottom floor, that's all water. Uh, and there's like a team there's a team coming in the door to our left that keeps like throwing Semtex in we're fighting them there's a team down the hallway also fighting another team in this doorway we're taking pop shots at them throwing Semtexes in I'm sitting in a corner getting Semtex so I'm like okay I need it there's a door over here that's closed I'm gonna try to get in this room and like chill here for a minute and like be able to play it up without getting cracked I sprint over there I open this door. Keep in mind, we had been fighting in the bottom floor of this building for minimum 60 to 90 seconds. And that's a long time when you're constantly shooting and fighting and getting grenades that's thrown at you. That's a long gunfight, yeah. I bust through the door. There is a guy in the left corner, crouch. There is a guy in the right corner, crouch. I am immediately dead. I'm like, holy fucking shit, there's two guys in here. I watch the kill cam. There's a guy also sitting on a shelving unit in the corner, just crouched, aiming at me. Again, these guys were all like level 40 plus all, i think all of them were crimson already and they're just playing like that and i'm like you know those guys before if these sr placement changes did not happen i don't think they would play like such pussies but it's because there were like seven eight teams left at that point they're trying to get that placement sr and they just sit there but guys of that skill level there's no way before they were doing that they would at least be popping out taking shots throwing grenades they were crouching there not making a sound just sitting in there that high skill level. So I don't know. This may end up being bad. I don't know. Like I said, it's good for me when we do well. I like getting the yeah, extra SR. Yeah, it's hard SR, to tell, like you said. But it may end up making late games way more ratty than they already can be because people are just going to be scared. Especially when you get up into those higher ranks. Like a top 250 team, when they're starting at minus 200 SR, minus 210 SR, you know, going from getting that extra 50 SR um, from before for a win, like they're going to play really slow because of that now. Yeah, so I don't know. Definitely. It may end up making it too boring. Maybe they went too drastic. Maybe a win should have gone from like 100 to 125. And then if they thought it needed more, change it to 150. But I don't know. I think basically it'll balance out with the ranks where I think before, for example, if you got hard stuck at gold two, now you're just going to get hard stuck at gold three. I think everyone is just essentially going to go up like one skill division from where they were because of the placement SR changes and it all balance out. But yeah, I'm just worried late game could end up being a lot slower now yeah um i mean you could have gotten unlucky two hours is what four games five games like maybe three of you... them were like that yeah that sounds to me especially if they had loadout and they were running away and none of them were dead like three people with loadout running away that sounds like it's a consequence of that change honestly yeah because ranks before, every time I've played, people would not do that. Mm -mm. If it was a full team and they all had loadout and they weren't, like, getting third party, they would fight. Yeah. And then if we, like, fold one or two, then maybe someone would run away, sure. But they wouldn't just, like, immediately just, like, bounce. So either yeah. you did get unlucky or it's a consequence of the change, yeah. Yeah. The way around that would be to keep the bonuses for, like, top five and then revert them for everything below that. So you still want to get a lot of kills and then, you know, 
once you get really close to top five, then you play campier or something. I don't know. That's hard to say. That's, again, one of those things also that you just need to... Um, we just need more time to, like, find out, you know? Yeah. If it's going to be, uh, like, common or not, basically. Yeah, I mean, hopefully... It, it also... It could be a lot of things. It's it's. I'm not saying it's because of the placement SR, but also you know maybe because the rank reset. So since everyone ranks go back, we're playing lower ranked players also in those lobbies. So maybe it's just a bronze team that had a feeling we were going to be better because we were pushing them. Yeah. So they just want to run away. Right. It could be that too. It could be a lot of things. I'm just saying there's also a good chance people could be playing much rattier for the the because of the SR placement now because they know kills yeah. matter much less if they can just stay alive. You know they could they could get top 10 and that's like three or four less kills than they used to have to get to get the same amount of SR just from staying alive and hiding essentially. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I I'm excited to play more ranked for sure. Just to, well, just to use the signal more frankly, but also I am curious what those changes are going to be like, but yeah. I feel like in on the whole, it's easier to just gain a SR in general. Yeah. For Everyone sure. is going to kind of be like a higher bracket than, th than they used to be. The only people it's really going to like not affect is like top 250 kids. They're just going to have more. Number one, instead of 40k SR, is going to have like 60. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, yeah, that'll be interesting. But anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the ranked rewards are really good this season, oh, too, yeah. by the way, like you said. The, the weapon camels like you are wrote, dope. Rather. It's, the, it's yeah. the best thing they can do besides operator skin. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the, the calling card is really cool, too, but you only get that at Iridescent. And it's a dope calling card, yeah. But unfortunately, you have to hit that ring. I right. want to hit Crimson this season. I want to grind enough. I I definitely easily think we can hit Crimson. Iridescent, I'm not sure about, but I think you I'm, could I'm confident we can hit Crimson. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent of the time. Especially now with these uh, SR changes. Yeah, like last season, I was I didn't play a single game and lose SR. Yeah, because I was still that low ranked. It just, uh, like, I didn't play enough to even be, like, struggling. What did I end the season at? Gold something, I think. Gold was I three. gold? Gold two or three. Gold two or three, yeah. I think so, because you're silver now again, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm so. pretty sure it was, like, gold three. Yeah. yeah. And I still didn't lose rating once. I'm already uh, so plat three again, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I think you three. could get, you guys could get crimson easily. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Uh, all right, and then a couple other little miscellaneous things here. Uh, the performance. So the performance is quite good, in my opinion. Uh, the client side performance has been as expected, like no hiccups really, no stuttering, getting the same frames I expect to get in general, and that's all well and dandy. And then the server side performance has also been fine. Um, I didn't experience a single issue yesterday playing Vondel, server side or client side. No stuttering, no disconnects, no lag, no packet bursts, uh, nothing. Um, before season five, the most server issues I got were in ranked, which mm -hmm. is where they are, which is the playlist, if any, that should have the least issues. With server yeah. performance. And yeah. And has that changed? Is the ranked server performance no. good now? It is. Uh, if anything, it's the same or maybe even worse at times. Yeah. So good. I thought the same thing. We played Vondel. Uh, we played a. What did we play? Like three games of Vondel or something? I think we won every one. I don't know. But then we went and played ranked after that. Um, Vondel felt good. Yeah. It didn't have any packet loss issues. Immediately. We play ranked, me, lag, and Jake. In the first game, we land and we're looting. All of us are like, cool, stuttering. So it's like I had the theory like eight months ago. It's like this, their servers can't handle 150 players. And that's, hey, that's why they dropped Almaz to 100 as well. They say it's because of pacing and queue times. In ranked? I don't know. Is that something they had talked about? 
The gulag has a tick rate of minus four. I know that, so I'm not God. sure. The gulag yeah, is just it. a fake game, by the way, if you didn't know. It's a fake predetermined. Huh? The winner is predetermined. They they decide who they want to win. The hit reg is the worst you've ever seen in a COD. Think of a Treyarch game, and then think of Treyarch designed that game literally in 1994. That would have better hit reg than the gulag has. It's mm. all fake. It's just fake hit reg. Nothing matters. So if you lose your gulag, don't worry about it, because it's fake and it's not real. Uh, but anyways... Yeah, so we had stuttering every single ranked match we played. Some were worse than others. Some it was worse at the beginning, and then it got better. Never do you see packet loss, though. It's just that weird stuttering. It's like that micro stuttering where you open a chest, takes a little second for it to come out, or you open a chest, you see it physically open, you don't see the loot pop out, all of a sudden the loot's just on the ground. You go up a ladder, you're going up the ladder sideways for some reason. Don't know why. You can't climb a ladder straight when it's stuttering, though. It's very weird. You'll accidentally fall off of ledges because your character takes one micro step and you fall off. It's just miserable dog shit trash. So as they said in the patch notes, uh, we ranked is currently staying on 150 players. It will not for long. At one point, they will drop the player count in the next couple months, few months probably, uh, and it's because the servers can't handle it. Because if they could fix the servers, we would not be having these issues anymore. There's just no way they can fix them, and we're just still dealing with this shit. So I think the only thing they can do is reduce the player counts probably, and so that's why they reduced the player count in standard mods. They wanted to test it out to see if that fixed the issues, and they're just rebranding it and getting on the internet and lying to us and saying it's because of the pacing and more people queuing. Those things are true. That does help with that, but their primary reason is because they're incapable of fixing the server issues of the micro stuttering, so they just reduced the player count because that's the easiest thing they could do because they can't fix them. So just keep that yeah. in mind, yeah. Uh, ranked will lose. Ranked will drop to like 120 at some point soon, I bet. Pr maybe not down to 100, but it'll for sure drop, and they'll make changes to the circle speed, the circle size, all of that. Yeah. Yeah, not... Bondle felt good, though, yeah. Not super surprised by that, sadly. Um, I just... How can a company this big with this much money just have server it i don't get it's it so bizarre find out how to game only dev. on ranked and that's where it matters most to have stable servers i don't if they can do it on vondel why can't yeah maybe it's just a player count it's like player count vondel 70 yeah yeah when have you ever yeah. stuttered on a sheikah never it doesn't happen yeah it's never, never happened once to anyone ever it's yeah. player count <laughs> yeah it's, it's player count it's probably something to do with cross plays consoles connecting with PCs all over the world and all that shit. It's probably just a disaster to try to actually make work correctly. So, stop making yeah, COD is. for consoles. Yeah, that that would just be kidding. Actually, get rid so. of PCs. PCs are dog shit trash. Yeah, don't buy one. Um, and if you do buy oh, one, are you ever getting yours? It. Yeah, <laughs> no, probably not. You're just never gonna get it, huh? Yeah, that's probably cool. not. No, that's dope, man. Uh, last quick little note here is the death recap feature they added. Uh, yeah, it never. I. I don't trust it at all because every single time I die, it says I hit myself two to five times. Stop with hitting yourself. The gun I have equipped, which is not possible. It's not the falling damage theory you had. That will show up if you take falling damage, but I like after our Thursday pod, I paid attention. Literally every single time I die, I'm in my own death recap. And I, there are plenty of times I die with my feet solidly planted on the ground. I didn't stun myself. I didn't fucking semtex myself. I just died. I got shot. And then I'm in the death recap. So I don't trust it in terms of what the enemies did either. Because it'll yeah. say I did damage to myself, and I know I didn't. Um, it didn't happen. Maybe so, the game yeah, just knows know. you're dog shit trash, and so they just... Do you like not that, you notice probably, that? I've never once seen it. Uh, I don't know. That is fucking weird. The only times I've seen Every it is when I know I've fallen off kidding. a roof. Yeah, okay, that's weird then. Yeah, I don't know. It's just me, I guess, or... Uh, maybe it's just some people, but every... Literally 100% of my death recaps, I'm in. Have to it, look. It's weird. Have it's very weird. That. So that makes me just not trust it at all. Yeah. But even if I did, I, I just don't care about it. I it, it doesn't matter. I And by the way, I don't know. I, I can't tell what gun that guy had from your shitty little two pixel picture, especially when you show it to me for three seconds max. And there are other guns that other people shot me with also. Yeah. It's just not very helpful. I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, even if it worked exactly perfectly it's like you guys should have developed 
other things. You should have fixed. You should have fixed the ranked servers with that time instead. You yeah. know, I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah. So other than that, that's kind of it for our first impressions. Uh, the majority of our discussion here really was on the weapons and weapon balance and weapon balance changes and those effects on season five. Uh, I just set up a boss P, so I will be giving that a try. The bastard P. Yeah, instead of the Vel. Um, but yeah, I mean, like Tanner said, this isn't really a new season. The new guns aren't transformative enough to make this feel like a different season. There's really no new content. There was just more weapon balancing done. So this kind of feels like the average weekly, maybe bi-weekly Raven patch. <laughs> Yeah, we would get in Warzone One, yeah. where the game would change the same amount that Season Five has changed Warzone uh, every week because they would do weapon balance every week. Uh, so yeah, not much really feels different. The only thing that's new content that I actually notice is they fixed the portable balloons and they added the flares to ranked and. Some people use the Avancer because it's viable, but not any better or worse than any other gun. Yeah. So yeah, kind of a lackluster mid-season in We're terms in, of yeah. new stuff. We're in like the preseason but, five. Exactly. That's the thing. We, we still have Fortress coming. That's going to be really exciting. I'm very much looking forward to that. There might be more weapon balance that changes things up as well. Looking forward to that too. Um... And what else are I going to say? And luckily, again, like we've said before, I think like we said for our season four reloaded first impressions. Yeah, not much just feels very different or has changed, but the game was fun before and it's still fun as fuck. So I'm not mad that nothing feels very different. Yep. So I would like things day. to feel very different and it be more fun than it used to be. But... If nothing changes and it's still fun, I'll take it. And that's where, once again, we are at. But it, it doesn't, it doesn't like light a fire under my ass to get back on. Cause like, oh, there's new shit now. It's like, well, yeah, it was fun before. It's still fun and I'll play. But I'm no more inspired to play than I was before season five, which isn't to say I'm lacking inspiration. I do like playing and I have fun playing. I play a lot. But, uh, I'm no more excited to get on now that season five is out than before. Yeah. Like not zero percent. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably true for everyone. Yeah. It's just, shame. it just still feels like, Oh, I feel like hopping on and playing Vondel or, Oh, I feel like hopping on and playing uh ranked, but you know, exactly. that'll change in a few weeks. Again, this is going to be overall in general, a really exciting month with the MW three reveal fortress. Yeah. And, that and fortress. And after we get the reveal, I feel like the season five reloaded patch will probably end up being honestly bigger and more exciting than the launch of season five. There will be something tied in there probably with the reveal. I couldn't tell you what it is. Maybe a new LTM or something else. I don't know, but I think the game will there undergo some changes too. Right? Who knows? Maybe we finally get some crazy shit. Like with the reveal, something happens with the map and we get like a pretty decent map change. Like maybe fucking peak blows up in the middle of Moz and that's all changes or something. I don't know. Something like that could happen with season yeah, five. Yeah, map change is true. Yeah, um, I think it's pretty likely. Actually, good call. I hope yeah. we get something like that because we really haven't. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten like uh, Afghan and some shit thrown in there. We had the sandstorm roll through downtown. We got trains, silent trains. Yeah, we got some small changes here and there. So Electric I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility. But yeah, yeah. overall, it's been fun. But yeah, nothing, uh, nothing real new going on. Mm -hmm. Nothing to complain about either, though, because of that. So that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, and then the most important question, is the game better or worse than it was before this patch? That, I think, is the benchmark, especially yeah. in Infinity Ward's case, for a good patch. And I would say the game's better. Yeah, I would say The it's balloons better. are now worth using. There are favorite supply boxes and flares on Ashika. Uh, there are flares now in ranked, but not in a obnoxious way. I think the game is better than it used to be before Season 5, just not by very much. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take it. And uh, before we log off here, I want to thank these donations. One of them we got a while back. Sorry. Uh, Rip Lips. 
Thank you very much. $19.99 donation for Tanner's marijuana habit. I don't smoke weed. I would be in prison if I did. Ripplers, thank you very much for the 20 bucks. And Warzone Mikey, wow. I guess this is for Black Cell. It's for Black Cell. It says there's a capital A and then it says dollar sign fourteen ninety nine. So I don't know what that is. What is A? Is would that be Australian something? Well, I it doesn't sound like the, the right number. Of thirty United exactly. States that's dollars. What I'm thinking. So you still owe us some money, which is very interesting. But yeah, let's look so at, that's Australian. I yeah, think, yeah. So Warzone Mikey, thank you let's very do. much for the fifteen Australian. I think. Let's figure out what that quick math is. Let's do some math. That's oh, you're do you're miserable dog shit and trash. That's that's nine dollars and eighty eight cents. Oh, Mikey, cents you're not even money. close, bud. Fuck you, Warzone Mike, Mikey. We need another thirty. Spit gif. We need Spit another thirty gif. Australian. So yeah, you yeah, tried to get off the hook. Thirty Australian uh, it didn't work. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, failed. Donate more. Next Fuck time. you, Warzone Mikey. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for the donation, buddy. We appreciate it. But don't buy Black Cell, and you still owe us money. But you know, you're chipping away. You've paid the minimum on your credit card balance, mm -hmm. so you know you're not fucked yet. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's um, cool. No extra. Yeah, so if you pay us by Thursday, then you don't have to pay the $5 interest fee because you paid your minimum. Yeah. That's what we'll count this as. But yeah, thank you, Mikey, for the super chat. Very much appreciate it. And um, yeah, we will be back uh, next week. So keep your eyes on the Twitter or in our Discord. Join the Discord. We fixed it. A lot of new people in Discord, a lot of hype and a lot of activity in the Discord. The Discord's been a buzz, frankly. Which is cool. Uh, and you got you listener should become a part of the buzz. Become a bee in the hive. Buzzy. Start buzzing over Buzzed there. Up. Uh you'll learn a lot. You won't. But you'll have fun, maybe. Um and yeah, if you're a patron, make sure when you join the Discord to link those accounts. There's a guide in the Discord on how to do that. It's very easy. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Got some Patreon episodes next week. Those are gonna be fun. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. Five bucks a month, you get all of our bonus COD episodes. You get ad-free episodes, early access episodes, and it's for an entire month. You also get the entire back catalog. So you're fucking insane if you like our podcast to not be at least a gold patron. Yeah. It's dumb. It's, it's stupid. stupid. You're stupid. So enjoy the ads, <laughs> fucking idiots. Stay humble. Stay humble.